السلام عليكم طلابنا الأعزاء This is my last lecture for you in the year 2020 which is about uveitis أو التهاب الطبقة الأنابية The uveal or the uveal tract is the vascular layer of the eye so it is the nutritive layer it includes the iris the ciliary body and the choroid the ciliary body as you know is composed from the anterior ciliated part which gives rise to the attachment of the zonules for the lens and the posterior plain non ciliated part which is called pars plana uveitis is inflammation of the uveal tract but sometimes this term also includes inflammation of the retina and its vessels there are certain definitions that we need to discuss first the onset the onset of uveitis could be sudden or insidious second duration the duration could be limited for three months we call it limited uveitis or it could be persistent uveitis when it continues longer than three months remission remission means inactive disease for three months or more after stopping the treatment while recurrence or relapse means repeated episodes of uveitis separated by periods of inactivity without treatment يعني يطيب ويرجع so repeated episodes of uveitis separated by periods of remission يعني نسمي relapse or recurrence resistance either to steroid this is called when there is no clinical response despite two weeks of maximum dose while resistance for immunosuppressive agents when there is no clinical response no improvement despite three months of effective dose with these drugs there are several ways to classify uveitis ممكن نقسم اليوفيايتس على أساس الأناتومي نسميه anatomical classification ممكن على أساس الإتيولوجي على أساس الكوز of uveitis هنسميه etiological classification وممكن أكو clinical classification رح نبدي بالanatomical classification it depends on the site which is predominantly involved by inflammation so anterior uveitis when there is predominantly inflammation of the iris and semi iritis or predominant site of inflammation is the anterior part of the ciliary body and semi iridocyclitis number two intermediate uveitis when the predominant site of inflammation is in the vitreous the vitreous cavity is the uh, structure which is full of inflammatory cells and semi vitritis or the posterior part of the ciliary body اللي سميناه parts plana راح يكون هنا the main site of inflammation فراح نسميه pars planitis عادة ويا راح يكون involvement of the extreme retinal periphery لأن تكون adjacent to it another definition for intermediate uveitis لما نشوف vitritis with no focal fundus lesion كلمة فندس أو مصطلح فندس أعتقد أصبحت فاميليار لكم اللي تعني قاع العين فإذا من أشوف بترايتس without focal fundus lesion يعني ما عندي لا كورويدايتس لا فاسكولايتس لا رتنايتس إذا it is intermediate uveitis the third type is posterior uveitis posterior uveitis يعني the predominant site for inflammation ممكن يكون the retina يعني رتنايتس the choroid, choroiditis or vasculitis اللي يشمل ممكن الارتريز راح نسميه periarteritis او الفينز راح نسميه periphlebitis or any combination of these يعني ممكن retinitis with arteritis او choroiditis with periphlebitis الى اخره number four panuveitis شو وقت اقول panuveitis when there is no predominant site for inflammation راح نشوف انه the entire, entire uveal tract is inflamed without having any site which is predominantly involved يعني كل ال, ال parts are involved 
to the same degree فأشوف ال anterior chamber is full of inflammatory cells أشوف ال posterior chamber أشوف ال vitreous full of inflammatory cells وأشوف أيضا ال retina أو ال choroid أو retinochoroiditis يعني أكو focal fundus lesion هنا رح أسميها pan uveitis This is how a patient with anterior uveitis presents The patient usually complains from a painful red eye When we examined the redness, we found that the redness have the uh, major amount of redness is around the limbus, سميناه ciliary injection. Uh, sometimes when the inflammation is so intense, the inflammatory cells were sediment down by the effect of gravity, and this will form hypopian. As you can notice, this uh, fluid level at the picture, which is right and up, And some inflammatory cells will be attached and adherent to the back of the cornea, to the corneal endothelium. We will uh, call this sign keratic precipitates, يعني الترسبات على بطانة القرنية. This slide shows us the sign of vasculitis. As you can see, the inflammation around the vessel walls. Also, the picture on the left showing this area of retinal whitening, which represents retinitis. This is slide showing uh, choroiditis. The picture on the left shows us a single site, solitary choroiditis, while the picture on the right represents multifocal disseminated choroiditis. Now, the clinical classification it is easy. Either acute uveitis, which have sudden onset and limited duration, يعني less than three months, or chronic uveitis that usually have insidious onset, but it persists for more than three months. Now we come for etiological classification. Etiological classification means the classification that will lead to the diagnosis of the cause, the etiology. So we, I have diagnosed the case as acute or chronic. by history and by examination I divided the subtypes is it predominantly anterior so is it acute anterior uveitis or the inflammation is predominantly in the intermediate uh, part of the uvea so it is for example chronic bilateral intermediate uveitis or is it unilateral chronic posterior uveitis either by history and by examination Then I will ask specific questions according to the differential diagnosis which I put in my mind and then this will direct the specific investigations that needed to be sent for each patient. So number one, uveitis in spondyl arthropathies. These are a group of uveitis with arthritis who are seronegative, meaning good seronegative, noxod, rheumatoid factor negative. 90% of them are HLA-B27 positive. They include ankylosing spondylitis, Reiter syndrome, and psoriatic arthritis. إذن حسب clinical setting وحسب suspicion وحسب الأسئلة اللي رح أسألها by history, I might need to send مثلا إنطاني history of psoriasis, it is enough. I will not send him, send the patient for other types of HLA, it's only Uh, uh, enough to put HLA-B27 in the list of investigation بالإضافة إلى الروماتويد فاكتر و of course dermatological consultation إذا هو مو أصلا رايح إلى dermatologist or the patient give me a history of a chronic backache where I will send him for x-ray for the lower uh, back and the sacroiliac joints وممكن يراويني رأسا the classical bamboo sign for the lower back for cases of ankylosing spondylitis and the sacroiliac joint inflammation, sometimes severe, even occlusion of the joint space, this will diagnose ankylosing spondylitis. Number two, uveitis in juvenile arthritis. These are juvenile arthritis who are rheumatoid factor positive. They have associated uveitis, but in the form of chronic anterior uveitis. مثل ما تعرفون juvenile arthritis uh, have th uh, three types still disease polyarticular and the palsy articular type some of them are ANA positive some of them are negative some have early onset some have late onset so those with early onset arthritis those who are palsy articular and those who are ANA positive 
they are at high risk to have associated UVI. So a child complained from arthritis and the parents consulted a pediatrician. The pediatrician diagnosed the case as juvenile arthritis. He should routinely send the child for the ophthalmologist in order to detect any underlying chronic anterior uveitis because the usual type of uveitis associating juvenile arthritis is the chronic anterior uveitis which have insidious onset and very low grade reaction. This is why the child will not complain from tearing or photophobia or red eye. Otherwise, he may be presented with complications like what we ca can see in the picture, the presence of cataract or band keratopathy. This whitish band-shaped opacity in the cornea could be a complication for the long-standing chronic anterior uveitis. So, this minimal reaction and being asymptomatic is the cause for the late diagnosis and uh, this should be put in mind because screening of children with juvenile arthritis may save the eye of the child and preventing the formation of these complications. Number three, uveitis in bowel diseases. The common are ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Number four, uveitis in renal diseases like tubulo interstitial nephritis and uveitis and also IgA glomerulonephritis. Number five, uveitis which is associated with systemic diseases like sarcoidosis, Behjet disease, leukemias and lymphomas and other connective tissue diseases like SLE, polyarthritis nodosa, etc. Even the Tlahdun, Kim added the specialties which are involved in diagnosing uveitis. Tida and min rheumatologist, il pediatrician, il physician, GIT specialist, nephrologist, those who are immunologist or hematologist, all of these specialties are involved in the diagnosis and follow-up of uveitis بالإضافة طبعا إلى الأرثالمولوجيست لأن البيشنت يعني ممكن يجيني for the first time and the vitritis and by investigation and by history اكتشف أنه عنده لوكيميا أو عنده لمفوما أو مثلا case إجا acute anterior uveitis واكتشفت by history by asking specific questions اللي تؤدي إلى specific investigations اكتشف أنه عنده بهجت مثلا أسأل specifically هل عنده oral ulcers أو recurrent orogenital ulcers تعرفون هاي واحدة من major criteria for diagnosing بهجت disease كذلك ال clinical setting مثل ما قلت لكم هو اللي يحدد the type of investigation يعني مثلا the picture which is uh, left and up represent مثل ما تلاحظون هاي النودules تدل على the granulomatous type of uveitis these are granulomas وبالحقيقة الكلر مالتها والشكل مالتها highly suggestive for sarcoid granulomas فإذا من أشوف هيك setting أول شيء أدزه besides the routine baseline investigation إنه أدز chest x-ray to look for high lectures for bilateral lymphadenopathy and if they did not appear I might need CT scan for the chest in order to document the presence of bilateral hilar shadows. So the questions that we ask in the history and the clinical setting is the one that leads to specific investigations because investigations for uveitis are very wide and it is not logical to send all the patients for all investigations. Number six, infectious uveitis. Let's A, bacteria, and the commonest are tuberculosis, bacteria and syphilis. El TB with syphilis, they are regarded as the big artist, yani the big actor. They can mimic any type of intraocular inflammation, especially TB. So it can present with acute, it can present with chronic, mumkin granulomatous, mumkin non-granulomatous, mumkin yuji anterior or posterior. So they have wide uh, uh, different types of presentations. B protozoal infection and the commonest is toxoplasma toxoplasmosis تقريبا عندها 10 الى 12 type of clinical presentations 
viral infections have the simplex zoster HIV CMV أغلب البرزنتيشن فور فيرال انفكشن تجي بشكل راتينايتس فانجل انفكشن اند ذا كومنست كاندياسس خصوصا تجي ان لونج ستاندينج ان دولين كاثيتر فور اكزامبل راح ممكن تؤدي الى اندوجينوس كاندياسس دوز هو ار دبليتد مال نارشت وذ كرونيك ديزيزز راوند وورم انفستيشن نعم ممكن الوورم ذي كان انفست ذا اي Well, the common one is Toxocara in our community. طبعاً the UVITIS هي تدرس حسب المجتمع وحسب نوع الفود وحسب الوذر. ولذلك إحنا دا نحكي in our community we have the roundworm infestation اللي هي Toxocara canis اللي تجي من ال ال dogs. أكو Toxocara canis أيضاً تجي من cats. فإذاً من جملة الأمور اللي تسأل بالhistory نسأل عن وجود البت الحيوان الأليف within the family هل هو ملقح أو لا و type of hygiene إلى آخره. Number seven, we have specific uveitis entities which are not associated with any underlying systemic disease and they have their own special criteria اللي راح نشخصها كسندرم ربما تكون هي غير معروفة بالسبب لكن علاماتها بمجموعها قدرنا نحطها بشكل سندرم وهذه ما مطلوبة من عندكم انتو هذه تخص الأفترمولوجيس واحدة وأخيرا number eight, idiopathic اللي ننطيها 30% and some of the studies they give them 50% Now the clinical features For anterior uveitis which represent 75% of cases the acute anterior uveitis it is easy to diagnose because of the severity of symptoms the patient will seek uh, medical attention early The patient will have Painful red eyes, photophobia, lacrimation, despite of having good vision. يعني من نفحص الفيجور أكيد يشوفه six over six. Despite the presence of inflammatory cells in the anterior chamber with the associated findings. On examination, septum corneal injection, meiosis, which is pupillary sphincter spasm, and this meiosis might predispose to posterior synechy, which is synechy between. The posterior surface of the iris and the anterior surface of the lens. Also, these clusters of cells might deposit on the back of the cornea, forming what we call KPs or keratic precipitates, which are which are composed of white feces, lymphocytes, polymorphs, epithelial cells. Number four, وجود aqueous cells floating in the aqueous, floating in the anterior chamber. This indicates activity of the seal. So these these white feces floating in the anterior chamber, when they are intense, they will sediment by the effect of gravity and they will form a horizontal fluid level. We call it hypopion. These indicate disease activity. يعني وجود الكيراتيك precipitates وجود السينيكي ما يعني وجود disease activity ممكن previous attack وصار بها رمشن. لكن بقت الآثار مالتها لكن وجود الأكوية السيلز واتأفر احنا رح ننطي grading من plus 1 إلى حد الـ plus 5 إلى حد الـ hypopian هذه ننطيها grades لكن بمجموعها بكل الـ grades حتى لو كان plus 1 أو plus 2 يدل على وجود disease activity number 5 سينيكي اللي هي الالتصاقات ممكن تكون anterior سينيكي which is between the anterior surface of the iris and the periphery of the cornea وهذا رح يسوي direct occlusion of the angle وممكن posterior synechy which is between the posterior surface of the iris and the anterior surface of the lens وهذه إذا صارت إذا على 360 درجة ممكن تؤدي إلى ما نسميه iris bombe يصير pupillary blocked glaucoma ثم iris bombe ثم secondary angle closure glaucoma number six IOP changes the intraocular pressure it could be high it could be normal or it could be low according to the state of inflammation according to the site of inflammation the type of inflammation يعني إذا عدنا inflammation specifically hitting the trabeculum اللي نسميه trabeculitis هذا راح يؤدي إلى shooting of the intraocular pressure but 
الدرس لانه راح يصير occlusion بالكافيتيرا بينما في حاله انه الانفلاميشن hitting the ciliary processes يعني aridocyclitis with significant inflammation of the ciliated part of the ciliary body اللي هو الانتيريور بارت اللي اسمه pars plicata تعرفون which is this aqueous is formed by the ciliary epithelium so we have inflammation of the site of formation of the aqueous اذا راح يقل من production of aqueous so we may have subnormal intraocular pressure ممكن يكون اقل وممكن ايضا سبب اخر لارتفاع الاي او بي مو بس وجود الساينيكي مو بس وجود الترابيكيلايتس ممكن وجود الدنس انفلاميشن سو ذا ترابيكيلار مشورك از اوكلودد باي ذا انفلاماتوري سيلز ناو ذا كلينيكال فيتشرز فور انترميديا كيوفيايتس يوجوالي ات از انسيديوس وذ بايلاترال فلوتر يعني المريض يجي يقول لك انا اشوف نقاط سوداء تتحرك قدامي أو أشوف أشياء سوداء تتحرك قدام الفيجوال فيلد مالتي وكذلك ممكن يجي in reduction of vision on examination the major sign هو وجود in inflammatory cells within the vitreous مثل ما تلاحظون the picture on the left this slit section taking by slit lamp examination تلاحظون هاي ال white dots represent inflammatory cells within the vitreous cavity posterior uveitis ايضا البيشنت يجي يقول انه اشوف نقاط سوداء او بقع سوداء قدامي عادة with impaired vision عادة with posterior uveitis when the lesion especially if it is in the center within the macula يصير severe reduction in vision طبعا الساين on examination هي retinitis اشوف choroiditis اشوف vasculitis with or without vitreous cells The picture on the right, the tlahbun, this is more intense and more dense vitreitis. The inflammatory cells, they are collected together with the cone and semi the snowballs, the anitishbah kurat al thir. So here it is more severe vitreitis than the picture on the left. What are the complications of uveitis? There are several complications for uveitis. Rahmat kol number one, glaucoma. And as I mentioned, there are different mechanisms for glaucoma. Mungkin A, blockage of the trabecular meshwork directly by the inflammatory cells and debris. B, inflammation of the trabeculum, trabeculitis, اللي راح يؤدي إلى inflammation يسوي يسوي لنا swelling, وال swelling ينتهي بـ narrowing of the pores that will drain the aqueous. C, sinecki, which is either posterior sinecki, وشرحناها شلون تسوي pupillary closure, iris bombe, and secondary angle closure, or peripheral anterior sinecki, اللي راح يسوي direct occlusion of the angle. D, steroid induced glaucoma, لأنه عادة من نشوف cells in the anterior chamber, we will give topical steroid. حتى لو كان الكوز هو an infective cause, topical steroids are not contraindicated, they treat the associated side effects for the presence of inflammatory cells and mediators within the anterior chamber فممكن abuse of local steroid بدون حساب بدون متابعة ممكن المريض يرتاح للقطرة يقوم يستعملها بكيفة بدون قياس الضغط ممكن تؤدي إلى steroid induced glaucoma The second complication for uveitis is development of cataract As you know The lens, in order to maintain its own clarity, it needs very special media, certain pH, certain concentration of minerals. These will be changed by the presence of chronic inflammation, and this will may lead to development of cataract. Also, steroids, steroids usually systemic steroids, and also local steroids to a less extent might lead to development of cataract. The type of cataract in uveitis mostly is in the form of posterior subcapsular cataract. Number three, band keratopathy, which is due to calcium deposits in the cornea. And the classical example, as I told you, is the uveitis associating juvenile arthritis. So usually chronic anterior uveitis is the one which could be associated with band keratopathy. Number four, cystoid macular edema because of the presence of inflammation and inflammatory mediators 
especially within the vitreous, so cases of intermediate uveitis with significant vitritis are more likely to develop cystoid macular edema لأن تعرفون كل الانفلاماتوري ميديتر وحدة من الأمور اللي تسويها هو dilatation increase in the dilatation and permeability of vessels so cystoid macular edema with subsequent reduction of vision is one of the side effects ممكن إذا lesion retinitis or choroiditis not involving the macula but adjacent leaky of the inflammatory mediators اللي سوت leaky vessels أيضا تؤدي إلى cystoid macular edema number five macular scarring with direct involvement by choroiditis, retinitis or retinochoroiditis as you can see in the picture on the right this is a toxoplasmic scar directly involving the macula ending with very poor vision number six optic atrophy and optic atrophy ممكن يكون the end stage for any severe posterior uveitis investigations for uveitis shall I send every patient for investigation the answer is no there are certain indications for investigation رح نقول انه investigations are not indicated in single attack يعني يجي اول مرة ما عنده previous history اول مرة دا يصير عنده هل acute anterior uveitis والattack is mild unilateral not bilateral not granulomatous يعني من يجيني unilateral و granulomatous هذا اسوي له investigation اما mild unilateral first attack not granulomatous واخذ منه history مو ما اخذ اخذ منه history احاول اشوف any associated underlying systemic disease any symptom in the history suggestive of an underlying disease وما لقيت by history history is negative then I do not need to investigate العكس مالتها when there is recurrent attacks when there is bilateral involvement إذا شفت granulomatous حتى لو one eye لكن granulomatous inflammation or in the history the patient I ask him specifically and he will answer positive answers for specific questions that suggest a diagnosis I have to send for investigation يعني اوكي سنجل اتاك لكن البيشنت اخذت منه هيستوري طلع عنده ريكرنت اوروجينيتال الثريشن انا يوجهني نحو الدايجنوزيس اوف بهجت حتى لو كان الفيرست اتاك حتى لو كان مايلد اي هاف تو سند فور انفستيجيشن او شفت عنده هو سيستميكلي ما عنده شيء لكن وسنجل اتاك لكن شفتها سيفير اتاك سيفير سنجل اتاك ايضا اي هاف تو سند فور بيس لاين انفستيجيشن كذلك ممكن مايلد وان اتاك لكن وان سيمتم ان ذا هيستوري مره من المرات بيشنت شي جيف مي وان سيمتم ويتش از بون بين سيفير بون بين بون بين اي سند هير فور انفستيجيشن ذا بيس لاين واي ديسكفر ذات شي هاف لوكيميا وات ار ذا جنرال انفستيجيشنز اللي سميناها بيس لاين انفستيجيشنز فور اول كيسز of uveitis that are indicated for investigation number one complete the blood count and ESR of course it give us a general idea about the condition ممكن واحد هي اتشخص الحالة ممكن يطلع لي very frank uh, abnormalities that will direct the condition to the hematologist number two chest x-ray ممكن the chest x-ray اشوف الهايلر shadows for sarcoidosis ممكن اشوف focus for pulmonary TB although most of the cases of ocular TB have negative pulmonary TB لكن ممكن تكون positive number 3 tuberculin skin test or EGRA test number 4 serology for syphilis because we said TB and syphilis uh, they imitate and they mimic any type of ocular inflammation sure they so they should be screened for the VDRL which is not a specific venereal disease research gap and we have the FDA apps fluorescent preconemal antibody absorption test or the TPHA the more specific preconemal uh, preconema pallidum heme agglutination assay number five rheumatoid factor and anti-nuclear antibody because uh, we have to differentiate between seropositive and seronegative uveitis and arthritis if there is associated arthritis 
Now, what are the specific investigations? The kernel baseline investigation, Harvey, we send them for any case which is indicated for these investigations. Lacking the specific investigations, this, these uh, types of investigations are sent individually according to the clinical suspicion. يعني شف picture, clinical picture, suggestive of toxoplasmosis, I have to send for ELISA for toxoplasma. Or, أخذت بالهستوري, إجاني young adult male, وعنده chronic backer, وطلبت منه أن يسوي flexion, وما قدر يسوي complete flexion, راح أدزه for x-ray for sacroiliac joints. أو بعض ال HLA typing تعرفون these are uh, يعني expensive investigations the HLA typing ف according to the suspicion أنا شاكة بوجود ال spondyl arthropathies I will send for HLA B27 typing أو إنه ال history is suggestive for بهجة disease I have to send for HLA B51 Finally treatment for uveitis we have four major groups of medications used in the treatment of uveitis. The patient comes with acute pain. Those who have acute anterior uveitis, they have photophobia, they have severe pain, they have lacrimation, painful red eye, need immediate relief of symptoms. So we have to get topical medariatics and cyclophegics and topical steroids. So for medariatics and cyclophegics, we have the three types. We have the long-acting atropine. Really it takes about uh, two weeks for action. وَلِذَلِكَ قَلِيلٌ نَسْتَعْمِلَ لِأَنَّ الْبْلَرْ فِجَنْ بِسَبَبِ الْمَدَرِيَاتِزْ وَالْسَّاكْرَفِيجَ يَأْخُذْ وَقْتَ طَوِيلٍ Usually we use cyclopentolate, which is an intermediate acting. It continues for 24 hours, so the administration is once at night. Or the shortest acting tropicamide, which is the weakest as a cyclophagic agent, we have to administer it four times a day. The benefit for medariatics and cyclophagics are to relieve pain and to break down cyanide by relaxation of the pupillary sphincter and also to prevent formation of cyanide. Number two, steroids. Steroids, other than topical, should not be given unless we exclude infection. But topical steroids can be given for acute uveitis and we are uh, waiting for the results of investigation. Periocular steroids in the form of retrobulbar, peribulbar, or posterior septillon injection, or systemic steroids, or even a neurot intravitreal injection of steroids, or by implanting a slow relief implant, these types of steroids should never be given unless we exclude infection because if we give them w without proper antibiotic cover, it will cause exacerbation of the disease. Number three, immune modulators like cyclosporine, which is a powerful T-cell inhibitor. These are given, also the biological agents, both are given as steroid sparing agents when we have side effects of steroids. But again, we should monitor blood pressure, renal, and liver function. Number four, the fourth group of medications are antimetabolites or cytotoxic agents. These are given for bilateral cytopressing uveitis, which is not infectious, so we have excluded infection first, and we give a steroid and there is no adequate response to steroids. Or we give a steroid and there is response to steroid, but there are intolerable side effects. So they are given as a steroid sparing agents. The commonest two drugs available are azathioprine and methotrexate. And both of these two drugs, they need long period to start action. They need several weeks to start. So the treatment may continue from six months up to two years. And also with a gradual taper over a period of six to 12 months and don't forget to send for a complete blood count because these two drugs they do bone marrow suppression also liver function test every uh, period in order to check for hepatotoxicity thank you for your kind listening and i'll be happy to answer any question i wish you best of luck